Hi everyone, it's Heather Cooper from Playing with Paper Crafting and today I'm going to talk to you about how to color with Stampin' Blends. We're going to be working with the Petal Passion um, Designer Series paper and uh, you can add color to it which is really nice. We're going to be using uh, two shades of several different Stampin' Blends mixtures and I just wanted to show you some of the features. There's a, a thick line at one end and a thin line at the other. The thick line shows the brush tip, uh, which is really nice for larger areas where you don't need a ton of control. And then the thin line is for um, more of a marker tip, which I'm really enjoying. Um, it gives you a lot more, I guess, control because it's quite stiff. So. Um, I find it much easier. So I'm going to start with the flower over on the right there and we're using the Rich Razzleberry, uh, the two shades, and there's a couple of ways of doing uh, mark um, coloring with markers. So you can start with your lightest shade and you can just lay down um, a layer of the lightest shade on the area that you want to color. So I'm going to go ahead and do this as you can see. And we'll just speed it up so that we don't have to watch it. Looks kind of like paint drying. After this, we're going to take the darker shade and we're going to um, add some shadows to what you're seeing here. So I'll just show you how that works. Okay, so now you can see that this paper already has some shadows marked in, so you don't have to guess about where to put the dark um, shade of the color. So we're just going to go over those shadow areas, but I also like to add it where for instance, the petals overlap each other. Um, and so the underneath part of the petal, as it just emerges from underneath another petal, is a good place to also add a little bit of the darker shade. And sometimes uh, the veins in the middle, I didn't do that on this one. Um, and then uh, you're going to go over uh, everything with the lighter shade again. Now this gives you a darker look because you're basically adding another shade of the lighter color. So you're going to end up with a darker looking um, finished product. I'll uh, show you um, on the next sample how to keep it a little bit lighter. You'll notice that I didn't go over all the leaves with the darker shade. And the reason I do that is because if you want to get a good blend with your alcohol markers, then uh, you don't you want to have them still a little bit wet when you go over them with the lighter shade so that they blend a little bit more easily. So I do just a few petals at a time, and that allows me to get a really nice blend. So the deal about alcohol markers is of course that they blend so easily. They don't leave like the brush marks that you see on um, the regular stamp and write markers for example. They just go together so smoothly. You can also use them on regular Whisper White cardstock without the cardstock um, disintegrating which is really nice. So now I'm going to show you the other method of uh, coloring with these Stampin', or Stampin' Blends. So in this method you're going to add the shadows first with the darker shade. Here I'm using the darker shade of um, Pink Pirouette. And I'm adding actually quite a bit, maybe a little more than I would with another color because the light shade of pink pirouette is so pale that you can barely tell there's a color there so um, I'm, I'm wanting to add a little bit more with the darker shade so we get um, a little bit more to see. 
So now notice that I only did a, a couple of areas and now I'm going to go over that with the light shaded pink pirouette. And I'm just blending those shadowed areas, the dark color, in with the light color. I'm really, really, really enjoying my Stampin' Blends. Uh, I had the original blend abilities and I was so sad when they were taken off, off the market and we weren't able to get them anymore because um, they just do such a terrific job of coloring your images and it's just so easy and painless to do it. I'm kind of enjoying having just two um, shades rather than three that we had with the blend abilities. It just makes it a little less complicated. So I'm again filling in the darker areas, the shadowed areas with the darker shade of Pink Pirouette and then I'm going to go over it with the lighter shade and that's the second method of blending with your blend abilities or sorry your Stampin' Blends not blend abilities. And you see that you get a nice light um, effect with that. Now I'm just going to go ahead and do a few more and I'm doing these with a combination of the the two different methods that I've shown you. So there I'm using the dark shade first and then blending it in with the lighter shade. And with the yellow one I'm laying on a layer of the light shade of Daffodil Delight and then I'm adding the darker shadows with the dark shade of Daffodil Delight and then I go on to blend those in with the lighter shade again and that gives me a bit of a darker look. There I'm going over it with the lighter shade. If you're stamping uh, an image, which we didn't have to because the image is already stamped, uh, make sure that you use uh, a water-based uh, ink such as the Memento Tuxedo Black. because um, if you use an alcohol-based ink, it will just run and bleed, whereas the water-based ink won't mix with it. So that's the first method I showed you. So I laid down a base of the lighter color, and then I'm adding the shadows with the darker color. And you can see as I go over the light to blend it in that I'm getting a darker look. And if you like um, the look of what you're seeing, um, you can check on my blog um, and the link will be in the description and uh, you'll be able to purchase any of these on my online store. My blog again is playingwithpapercrafting.com. Uh, Thanks for watching.